Amanda Seals reveals something pretty huge in her interview on Club Shay Shay. And I don't even think Amanda Seals realized what she revealed. And you might think you know, but I highly doubt it because I haven't heard anyone talk about it from this angle. So as I give you a brief synopsis of what happened, I have to do that in order to for you to really understand what this big revelation was. I want you to pose this question. Keep this question in your mind. Is Amanda Seals entitled or is she more like a family scapegoat in the situations that she's been in? So Amanda was talking about how she's had many jobs. She's worked in the entertainment entertainment industry throughout her life. And a lot of people in the various job settings that she's had in the various professional settings that she's had disliked her and they've gone out of their way to let her know, be it like explicitly or like in a passive aggressive way to let her know that they don't like her at all. And so the average person, or I shouldn't say that, but most people, if if I were to tell you or if someone were to tell me I've had 40 jobs in my life and 38 of them, you know, the people hated me at my jobs, be it the boss, different coworkers, blah, blah, blah. Most people are going to say, well, if you've had 30 or if you've had 40 jobs in your life and 38 of those jobs, most of the people hated you, then you're probably the problem, right? Okay, but my mind works like this. If somebody were to tell me, hey, I've had 40 jobs and 38 of them, you know, the people disliked me, I'm the type that will say, yeah, you could be the problem, which could be the case here with Amanda, or you may just be that unfortunate person who's had many toxic jobs, right? Which is very po feasible, it's, it's possible for that to happen. So with that said, I'm going to focus on a couple of things that she talked about because she talked about various jobs. This was like a three hour interview. So, you know, I'll give you a, a really brief synopsis here so you don't have to watch it, but you can because I'm kind of taking a much, much different angle than a lot of people on this. But she had a few things that I want to talk about. So number one, she was in a group called Flowetry. And if you don't know what group that is, they were like a neo soul type of group. And they're known for their song Say Yes, which I absolutely love. OK, as well as other songs. And so um, Amanda Seals was replacing one of the members, the lead singer. Her name is Marsha Ambrosius. And so when allegedly when Amanda got there to replace the member and she did, you know, they were going to do their first show with Amanda Seals and not the other member. The crowd was not feeling it because they were like, who the hell is this woman? Even though Amanda Seals could sing, she's came professional, right? She's, she's you know, good at singing and, and, and the whole, she knew the lyrics, everything. Naturally, the audience was like, we were expecting someone else, the, the main member of the group or one of the original members of the group. And now all of just out of nowhere, there's this other woman. Who the hell is this? So they, they didn't like that at all. So in a nutshell, Marsha Ambrosius wasn't, there was like a lack of communication with her and the audience, obviously. And then there was also a lack of communication between Marsha Ambrosius and Amanda Seals. And according to Amanda, the way that she was being treated, you know, by Marsha and other people in, you know, the staff, basically, she felt as though that they were trying to get her to leave the group because Marsha's people were basically like kind of prepping her to do her solo career. So they've in Amanda's basically words, I'm paraphrasing here, they kind of needed Amanda out of the way, okay? And so Amanda was messing around with one of the guys, I think in the band, and he told her, hey, that song that you're gonna do, I'm assuming it was a solo that she was gonna sing, uh, uh, Marsha's gonna cut that song, and she's not. she wasn't gonna tell you, basically. So Amanda was gonna go up there and sing this song, or she thought she was, and then be surprised right on stage in front of the audience that she wasn't singing it and be embarrassed or whatever. So Amanda goes to Marsha and says, hey, are you planning? I heard you plan on cutting my song. And um, and Marsha completely denied denied it. And, and finally, Marsha was like, OK, fine, then you can just go ahead and sing it. OK. And so other things started to happen, you know, behind the scenes with Marsha. And it was a lot of passive aggressive things going on. So basically, they made Amanda allegedly feel like um, she wasn't really welcome there and that they wanted her to leave. Amanda finally got tired and was like basically getting ready to leave and was like, screw the whole thing. And someone, I don't know if it was the guy she was messing around with or someone else in the group basically told her, hey, don't leave because you'll be giving them exactly what they want. And you're going to look back on this later in life and regret that decision because you're handing it to them. So she ended up staying until it was time for her to complete the job that she needed to do. OK, that's crucial. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this story for a reason. All right. Now she's working with Issa Rae and she's on that show Insecure and Issa Rae's pub publicist. Her name is Vanessa. I want to make sure I got it right here. Vanessa Anderson is being like one of the most rudest people to Amanda, allegedly. OK. And from Amanda's perspective, sounds to me like Vanessa Anderson was a textbook narcissist based on the way that Amanda was 
you know, expressing herself about this woman. The woman would just be really nasty to her, say very rude things to her. And whenever Amanda would try to go to Issa Rae and say, hey, your publicist is acting weird with me. She doesn't seem to like me. Issa Rae's response would be something like, that's between y'all. I don't want no part of it. Y'all y'all fix that. Y'all, you know, handle your dispute yourselves. I, I'm not a part of that. Okay. And so a couple of other people or one other person who was like in a business meeting of some sort. Sorry, I'm getting my computer set up here. Um, they saw the way that Vanessa was treating Amanda and they had to tell her like, hey, can you kind of be professional here? Like, they, they, they witnessed the behavior, okay? So, someone really important, I forget the person's name, invited Amanda to go to this Black Emmys event. And so, Amanda was excited. She put on this really beautiful outfit. She came with some friends. And upon arriving, when she was about to go in the door, the security stopped her. And I believe Vanessa actually told her, um, you can't be here. And Amanda's like, why? And so, one of the security guards came out and told her, you can't be here. And Amanda's like, why? Says who? Like, who's telling you I can't be here? And the security guard is like, well, let me go find out. And she's thinking, like, go find out. Like, you don't know who told you to tell me not to be here? And so then another guy comes out and is like yelling at her. And it's a black guy. And this is a black event. And by the way, Vanessa Anderson is not black. I believe she's Latina. And, you know, Amanda felt a way like, you know, this is a black event. You telling me I can't be here and the whole, whatever. And so basically, like, they embarrass her and one of the security guards, like, basically chest butt her or something like that, pretty much assaulted her because Amanda was getting upset and was about to turn around and give them a piece of her mind. And they either thought or acted like they thought that she was going to try to physically attack them or something like that. And so when she told Issa Rae about it, Issa Rae's kind of just like standing back and didn't want any part of it. And then she ended up speaking to Vanessa Anderson and Vanessa Anderson was like, the reason why I didn't, it was me who didn't want you to come to that party. I told them to kick you out. And it's because I don't like you. Okay, so being very rude and very, just terrible. So finally, okay, we're here. Finally, um, um, Amanda goes to Issa. She says, hey, I feel like, you know, I want to talk to you and I would like to take you to dinner so we can talk some things out. And Issa went to dinner with Amanda. And so Amanda, I'm going to read what she said verbatim because I want to make sure I don't get, you know, speak out of context here. Amanda took her to dinner and she told her, she said, I feel like you have something against me. In which Issa responds, well, I guess I was looking at you like your character on the show. Okay, that's crucial. The reason why that's so crucial is because something happened and I don't know if it was previous. I believe this happened previous to them going to dinner is when Amanda Seals came in her trailer on the show insecure and she said she came to her trailer and she saw a Malcolm X quote and there was a guy who was like tatted from the neck down he's a black dude from Detroit and he'd be eating edibles on set and so she just felt real comfortable with him and I feel like because everyone on set didn't like her and was being kind of mean to her maybe she felt like this was her way of kind of gaining a relationship with someone on the set and she told him she said um did you leave that Malcolm X quote in my trailer? She said, because I feel like you would do that because you're the only revolutionary in blank GGA, not the N word, but close in blank GGA. You're the only revolutionary in GGA um, on set. And he told her, don't say that to me. And so she was like taken back like, oh, crap. And so a black woman takes her aside and tells her basically like reprimands her, like don't be saying that to people on set. OK, and so. You know, she felt away and she said, well, I wasn't being, you know, rude to him. She said, I called, I didn't just call him NGGA. She said, I called him a revolutionary NGGA, right? They still weren't going for that. And so let's get back to Issa's comment where she said, well, I guess I was looking at you like your character on the show. Basically, Issa's being weird to her and having weird vibes because Issa's saying, well, I guess I looked at you like your character on the show. And so that's the big reveal. Basically, what I feel that Issa is saying, I feel like Issa's being passive aggressive here, okay? If you were able to follow me this long. To me, what it sounds like Issa's saying is, well, if you can say that word to this man here, the NGGA word, right? Just because we say that word on the show, because they say that word a lot on the show, on Insecure, and you felt like that gives you the right to say that to him, then I should be able to base my perception of you as a person as your character on the show. Now, obviously she does it because Issa Rae wrote that character, right? So she doesn't feel that way, but that's an extremely passive aggressive way to 
of going about explaining how she felt. Now, why is that so crucial? Because I want to say this. A lot of people I have, I've worked in Hollywood before on a show where anyone in America, if I named the show, you would know exactly what it was, as well as I have a family member who works in Hollywood. A lot of people in Hollywood are not as confident as they may appear. They're really insecure. Look at the name of the show, Insecure, written by Issa. I don't know this woman. This is all from Amanda Seals's perspective and from her voice. So I don't have a different side of the story. I'm only listening to Amanda here. Okay. But based on what she's saying, you know, so yeah, a lot of people aren't, they're, they're insecure in Hollywood. Amanda Seals is an extremely educated woman. She's extremely intelligent. And so what could have happened is Issa might see that this woman is extremely educated. She's extremely talented and might have felt insecure, no pun intended, <laughs> about Amanda's presence. And so a lot of times if I don't feel as intelligent as you, right, and I have sort of a passive aggressive way of communicating, right, I might go about doing things to make myself feel more intelligent than you by doing passive aggressive things, right? Like saying what she said and, and instead of telling her, why don't you not say that? Just because we say that on the show doesn't give you the right to say that to someone, yada, yada, yada. Going about it in a passive aggressive way. What else makes me think that she's passive aggressive? Well, think of it this way. If you were in a recording studio and for some reason you had to work with Beyonce and her publicist hated you, started saying really nasty things, being passive aggressive and whatever, being really, really um, offensive to you, what does that mean? It means that Beyonce hates your guts. What is the role of a publicist? A publicist is there to maintain the public image and the media presence of a celebrity, but more so like their public persona. And so what am I trying to say here? If I hire a publicist or a manager, that person can be the bad cop while I get to sit back and be like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm the person who probably told them I hate her. Say this to her, say that to her. If I need to fire someone, I'm probably not going to do it myself. In some cases, people do. I'm probably going to have my, my manager do it or my publicist, right? Beyonce is probably going to have someone else do the dirty work. Now, I'm not saying Beyonce is a bad person, but I'm just saying if she has to do something that's not so friendly, someone else is probably going to do it for her because she has to maintain her image. And so that's what I'm saying. If you look at the difference between when Amanda was in Flora Tree there was some passive aggressive stuff going on, but it was a little more upfront because allegedly it was coming from uh, Marsha Ambrosius herself, right? Whereas in this situation, it was coming from Issa. It was coming from Issa, but it wasn't coming from her directly. And so a lot of people think that when they're being passive aggressive, they're more intelligent than you are. And it gets me back to the point that I'm trying to make with I Issa Rae is if she feels insecure about this woman's intelligence level and she feels like she can't go toe to toe with her in a conversation about, you know, um, anything regarding African-American studies, politics, whatever it is, she may feel like, well, I'm going to come a passive aggressive way and do something passive aggressive to you to let you know this or to, or to remind myself of this. Like, I'm the queen here in this situation and I'm playing politics with you and you don't even realize I'm the one that's sicking the dogs on you. You don't have the intelligence level to know that, yeah, my publicist hates you and this stuff is happening, but it's all me who's doing it to you. And maybe that makes her feel like she's more intelligent than Amanda. I know that sounds like a stretch, maybe to some people, but I've worked in corporate America enough to know that a lot of the people sometimes who are higher up, they're very insecure. And the only way that they can go about feeling secure is if they do passive aggressive things. It makes them feel like they're intelligent. So my opinion here is that Amanda Seals, she doesn't realize how she's coming across to people because she doesn't realize that a lot of people, they come with the ego. They're never going to admit it, but they come with the ego. And some people, you have to talk to them. If you're talking about something that makes you look brilliant, you have to do it in a way where either you're playing stupid, like you don't know it makes you look brilliant, or you're going to make sure that it only puts you here, but not above them. What did, what did Robert Greene say in the 48 Laws of Power? Never outshine the master, right? And I think that Amanda Seals is just her presence alone could make people feel some type of way because she's highly educated. She's a really beautiful woman. You know, um, she's extremely confident. And how does it look when women are confident? Number one. Um, and it puts her 
it, it kind of puts a target on her back where in many situations she could easily become a scapegoat. What do you think? Because this video is going on too long. What do you think? Am I way off? Do you agree with me? Or do you think Amanda Seals is the problem? I don't think Amanda Seals is the problem. I might be wrong because I'm only hearing one side of the story. Let me know in the comments.